There were a lot of characters that had a thing for Percy Jackson in the Rick Riordan books. He was a pretty sought after guy, with 9 characters either having a crush on him or being taken aback by his good looks. In this video, I'm going to go over every character that took an interest in or that liked Percy throughout the Percy Jackson series. Now fair warning, there will be spoilers for the first 5 books and also for the Heroes of Olympus series, so you have been warned. Also, if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on all of my other social medias, all of which are linked down below, and all of which house similar content that I make here on this channel. Now that I've said that, let's get into it, starting with Hazel Levesque, which might surprise some people. Hazel didn't so much have a crush on Percy, but she was certainly taken aback by his good looks. Her immediate thought was that he had the good looks of a Roman god. However, nothing ever came of this. Next, we have Piper McLean, which also might surprise some people. Piper, similar to Hazel, was also taken aback by Percy's good looks, more specifically his smile. She said he wasn't really your type, but admitted that she understood what women would like about him. She was also taken aback by his sea green eyes, even thinking to herself that she did not know how Annabeth had ever won an argument while looking at them. After that, we have Reina Ramirez Arleano. Reyna actually made a move on Percy only two days after meeting him. Now, whether that move was a business decision or one made because of her feelings is something that many Percy Jackson fans debate and argue about. Some say it was a political move for an alliance, others say it was her shooting her shot. But either way, Percy denied her. Yikes. <laughs> Next, we have Kinsey, and I'm sure a lot of people are asking, who the heck is Kinsey? Kinsey was an Amazon who served Queen Hilla, and she was a very brave and powerful warrior. Despite that though, she threw herself at Percy while at Camp Jupiter, openly saying that she was available if he ever needed a girlfriend. Percy however told her that he already had a girlfriend at his old camp, that of course being Annabeth. And after that, we have the Trials of Apollo character, Meg McCaffrey. Like Kinsey, Meg had some interest in Percy as well, but when Percy mentioned Annabeth helping him pass his classes at school, she asked who Annabeth was. When Percy said that Annabeth was his girlfriend, Meg frowned, and she lost interest thinking it wasn't worth it. Now we get to some of the bigger examples, starting with Nico D'Angelo. Nico was another person who had a thing for Percy, though it was much more intense than the previous people on this list. Nico had a crush on Percy from the moment he met him, but they had some ups and downs. Nico had a plan to have Percy bathe in the river Styx, which it was later revealed was Nico actually trying to do something to make Percy fall in love with him. When Percy and Annabeth got together at the end of The Last Olympian, Nico left Camp Half-Blood because of his jealousy and sadness that Percy picked her, and he had a lot of resentment toward Annabeth for this. Nico eventually started to resent Percy for the feelings that he was having, and there was definitely some homophobic, negative self-talk in his head, constantly running from the feelings he had for Percy. During the House of Hades, Jason witnessed Nico facing his true feelings for Percy when he faced off against Cupid. At first, Nico tried to say it was Annabeth he liked, but he finally admitted that it was actually Percy. After Nico came out to a few people, it gave him the courage to come out and admit his true feelings to Percy himself, and Percy was left absolutely speechless, too shocked to speak. He obviously did not feel the same way, as Percy was into women, not men. However, while Nico admitted his feelings to Percy, he realized that he had actually moved on and said that he was happy for Percy and Annabeth. Nico ended up with Will Silas instead, which was a much better match. And now, we get to Calypso. Percy met Calypso when he was stranded on her phantom island of Ogigia. Calypso healed Percy back to health after his brave but stupid stunt on Mount St. Helens. Calypso was an immortal who was condemned to live on this island forever, which was punishment for helping her father Atlas during the Titan War. Her curse was that the greatest heroes were sent there, heroes that she could not help but fall in love with, and every time she would fall in love with them, they would leave and go back to the real world. Percy was one of these heroes, and Calypso quickly fell in love with Percy. She asked him to join her and live with her on Ogigia forever, admitting her feelings and even telling him that if he stayed, he would become immortal but he turned her down. Percy somewhat loved Calypso back, and obviously thought she was beautiful, even saying that he thought she was more beautiful than Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. Though Percy decided to leave the island, he admitted that as long as he lived, Calypso would always be the biggest what if in his life. 
Later, he did ask the Olympian gods to show leniency toward Calypso, but he never followed up, meaning the gods never freed her. Calypso was angry about this, but surprisingly not at Percy, but rather at the gods and also Annabeth. And she was so mad at Annabeth that she actually cursed her. In the end, Calypso was freed from her island by Leo Valdez and they ended up together, which like Nico and Will was a much better fit. However, there was an awkward interaction between the three of them, that being Calypso, Percy, and Leo. They spent most of the day together before Percy was like, this is weird, I'm out, and dipped. Next is Rachel Elizabeth Dare. Percy met Rachel in the Titan's Curse. She was a mortal who could see through the mist, and she actually saved Percy the first time they met. She later helped Percy in the labyrinth, much to Annabeth's annoyance. This grew their bond, and before the last Olympian, Percy and Rachel spent a ton of time together and got much closer. Percy passed time with her when he wanted to get away from Camp Half-Blood, seeing as Rachel was immortal. Just to be clear, I'm not saying immortal, I'm saying a-mortal. <laughs> Just want to make sure that's clear. I was reading this and I was like, it kind of sounded like a mortal. Rachel had a major crush on Percy, and he liked her back. Rachel even begged her father to let Percy come on vacation with them, but Percy had to go off to do demigod stuff so he couldn't go. And Percy was similar, actually memorizing Rachel's phone number, which he had written on his arm. While they were hanging out one day, Rachel asked what it would take for the dumb guy to kiss the girl, and the two shared a kiss. They were interrupted, however, by Beckendorf, and Percy left to go on a mission, doing more demigod stuff. This caused Rachel much aggravation, both for this and also because he couldn't go on vacation with her, which even led to her throwing darts at a picture of Percy. Rachel still came to his aid during the Battle of New York though, where she told him his part in the Great Prophecy. While on Mount Olympus, Rachel thanked Percy for showing her the world of gods and monsters, but said that they had different destinies, meaning they could not have a romantic future together. In the book, Percy saw this as him being dumped, even though he and Rachel never officially dated. The two remained good friends though, as Rachel became the new oracle, and Percy ended up with Annabeth. And that brings me to the final person on this list, Annabeth Chase. Annabeth is obviously the person that Percy ends up with, and looking at the list on the rest of this video, she had a lot of competition. When Percy first woke up in The Lightning Thief, he described Annabeth as a pretty girl with princess curls. She nursed him back to health after the Minotaur attack, and after going on a few quests together, Percy eventually developed a crush on Annabeth. The goddess Aphrodite told Percy and Annabeth that they would have a tragic love life, which actually turned out not to be true. They had a very happy love life, though it took a while to get there and they went through many trials together. When Luke Estellan was still around, Percy would get jealous when Annabeth would get protective and caring toward him whenever Luke was accused, despite the fact that he was actively going against them. It was Luke who made Percy realize his true feelings for Annabeth though, so that's something. <laughs> After winning the chariot race in the Sea of Monsters, Annabeth kissed Percy on the cheek, which I guess was their first physical interaction. In the Battle of the Labyrinth, Annabeth kissed Percy for good luck on Mount St. Helens, which was actually the last thing Percy really knew before waking up on Ojigia where he met Calypso, and remembering that kiss might have been the reason why he chose to leave the island and go back to the real world. At the end of The Last Olympian, Percy tried to convey his feelings to Annabeth, but they were interrupted when all of the other campers threw them in the lake. They then kissed underwater, which Percy described as pretty much the best underwater kiss of all time, and after that, they officially became a couple. Not long after that though, Percy went missing, and Annabeth told Piper that Percy kissed her the night before he disappeared in The Lost Hero. Annabeth was a frantic wreck trying to find Percy. Meanwhile, Annabeth being his girlfriend was the only thing Percy could remember about his life, and she was the first person that fully came back to him when he got his memory back. Percy mentions in The Son of Neptune that whenever he did something stupid, Annabeth would kiss him, which he said meant he probably did stupid things a lot just to get a kiss. When they were reunited, Annabeth and Percy gave each other a huge kiss after being apart for so long, but then Annabeth judo flipped him, mad at him for being away. At the end of that same book, the two fell into Tartarus holding hands, and Percy swore that he would never let her go again. In the House of Hades, Annabeth and Percy's relationship faced its hardest challenge to date, as they survived in and escaped Tartarus. They made it through by mostly focusing on the life they wanted to have together in the future when they got out of this. During those two months of dating during the events of the Heroes of Olympus series, they became closer, more romantic, and even more loving toward each other. In the new book, The Chalice of the Gods, Percy and Annabeth went on a quest together, ensuring that Percy could attend New Rome University with her. Annabeth made it clear in that book that she intended to see their relationship through, spending the rest of their lives together. 
Now, I have a challenge for you guys. I want you to comment below and tell me who your three favorite ships with Percy are. There were a lot more examples than I originally thought there were going to be when I started writing this script. I'm super excited to read what you have to say. That's all I have for you guys this week, though, so I will see you in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life, like my cute dog Loki, and some behind-the-scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me, and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.